Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about CPU cores. We're gonna define what they are, how they work, why you might want more of them, all in about five minutes. Now, before we get started, if you guys are interested in genuine Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll have links in the description box below. So without further ado, let's begin. All right, so we'll start with answering the question, what is a CPU core? The easiest way to explain it is that it is the amount of cores on a CPU. The CPU or central processing unit, and all the CPU really does is execute basic instructions in a computer program. So when the CPU was first developed, it only had one single core. But as we came more technologically advanced with computers, multiple core CPUs were developed and are used around the world today. But to simply explain a single core CPU, all of the programs that you're running on a computer at a given time are only processed by that one single CPU core. Now with modern computers today, you're typically gonna find computers with a CPU of two, four, six, or eight cores. And these are gonna be like your everyday laptops. For example, this has six cores, but the maximum core CPU that you can purchase today is 64 cores. And if you're wondering why I have more cores, we're about to get into that. All right, so how do cores work? The computer is going to interpret each core as its own processing unit. Now, before cores were even a thing, product developers tried to build out larger motherboards with multiple CPUs on them, but there were a few issues with that, and some of those being the cost of multiple CPUs and the size of the motherboards. But having multiple CPUs also causes an issue called latency. Latency is a fancy term for network delay, which means that you want a low latency in general in order to have a fast and normal working computer and introducing multiple CPUs onto the same motherboard was causing too high of a latency for it to be efficient. So now onto the purpose of having these individual cores on a CPU. Well, what your computer will do is it will run a program off of each core. So for example, if I'm running Final Cut Pro, Microsoft Excel, Adobe Illustrator, and Safari all at the same time on a four core system, each of those applications will be running from one of those cores. So core one would be Final Cut Pro, for example, core two would be Adobe Illustrator, core three, Microsoft Excel, and core four, Safari. Here's where it gets a little bit complicated. More often than not, you'll be running more applications than you have cores available on your CPU. So you might be wondering, well, how does the computer run these applications if I'm already running applications on all of the available cores? To understand this, we need to talk about the process that occurs when you run an application. So when you run an application, that process is assigned its own memory, in this case, RAM, and it's also assigned credentials. And by credentials, that just means a number to identify the program. It's kind of like a serial number is the easiest way to think about it. The system will then assign that process to a core. And if there are no currently available cores, it will split off into what's called a core thread. Now threads are something that was developed after cores and threads will virtually divide out a core to create more cores. So it's just a way of allocating the processing so that you can run even more programs simultaneously. Now you may have seen this before if you were buying a computer online or at the store. Manufacturers will typically advertise the amount of cores and the amount of threads within each core. So for example, it could be six cores, eight threads. Now, if there are no cores and no threads available for the program to run, it's gonna wait in what's called a queue and it'll stay there until it's called to action. So the CPU essentially has its own organization system, which is really cool. When a process is created, a CPU will first look to run it within a single core. If that's not available, it will go into the thread of a core. And if that's not available, it's gonna wait in a queue until an entire core or a thread of a core is available to run. All right, so we've covered what CPU cores are and a little bit about how they work. Now the question is, why would you want more cores and does more cores just mean a faster CPU? Well, it's not as linear as that. There are a handful of specifications that you wanna pay attention to if you want the fastest processor possible. So some of the things you wanna consider when looking at processor speeds are the megahertz, the number of threads in each core, the instructions per cycle or IPC, this is one thing that's not typically advertised for manufacturers. It takes a little bit more research to figure out what type of speeds you're gonna see. And then of course you have watts. All right, so we're gonna finish this video off with a little example to hopefully help you understand this a little bit better. On this computer, I do all of the video editing for this YouTube channel. 
and that's consisting of 4K video from my camera, which is very high quality, very large file sizes, and it can be difficult to edit on a computer that's not sufficient. So the processor within this computer is an Intel i9 with six cores and 12 threads. And that gives me all of the CPU power I need to efficiently edit, as well as run other programs simultaneously. This is kind of an area where you might just wanna do a little bit of your own research if you're doing something like video editing, photoshopping, or any of those demanding applications. All right, so that's gonna do it for today's video. If you guys have any questions, drop those in the comment section below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you found the video helpful, we'd really appreciate a like, comment, subscribe, and share. And again, be sure to check those links in the description box below if you're interested in genuine Microsoft software at a great price. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.